Co-Chair Washington, you are on right now. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Devala, could you uh, please um, uh, read the land acknowledgement? Absolutely. The Flagstaff City Council humbly acknowledges the ancestral homelands of this area's indigenous nations and original stewards. These lands still inhabited by native descendants border mountains sacred to indigenous peoples. We honor them, their legacies, their traditions, and their continued contributions. We celebrate their past, present, and future generations who will forever know this place as home. Thank you. Um, Actually, Rose, could you uh, do a roll call, please? Okay, Commissioner Cuddyai. Commissioner Cuddyai. And then Co-Chair Toya. Present, thank you. Co-Chair Washington. Present. Commissioner Lance. Here. Commissioner Marks. Commissioner Marks. Commissioner Whitehat. Commissioner Whitehat. Commissioner Yellowhair. And Commissioner Zavala. Here. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, very good. Um, public comment. Uh, is there anyone I don't uh, I, I don't see the view uh, the full view of uh, who is here? Is there anyone here for uh, public comment? If not, we'll move to the next item. Approval of minutes. Um, is there a motion for the approval of minutes? This is Commissioner Toya. I make a motion that we approve the minutes for February 1st, 2023. Okay, I'll second that. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, any opposed say nay. Okay, approval of the minutes has passed. Um, we go to um, uh, the general business. Um, and indigenous, indigenous artists applications for recent beautification arts and science projects. Uh, yes, greetings, um, co-chairs Toya and Washington and commissioners Lance and Zavala. I'm Jana Weldon and I am the uh, currently serve the city in the capacity of the beautification arts and sciences program manager. Um, and so I have a, just a brief PowerPoint because um, since uh, I began at the city three years ago, I have been working very closely with um, your coordinator of indigenous initiatives, Rose Tohi, to uh, increase visibility um, and uh, cultural visibility and inclusion of uh, indigenous artists in our projects. So I just was wanting to share some, you know, kind of uh, uplifting news as far as some of our progress. Um, we have seen an uptick in the applications uh, since I began three years ago. Uh, one of the opportunities that we show, and I just want to stop and double check, you are seeing my presentation, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. Good. I just wanted to double check before I, I go on and on. So one of the opportunities that we have for two dimensional artists uh, in our in our programming is the traffic signal cabinet. And we did start that when I began three years ago. And, you know, these cabinets are these stainless steel structures. They're at every signalized intersection um, and we can take a 2D design of an artist and print it and wrap it in vinyl and put it around this and kind of make a three-dimensional um, artwork. And we have been expanding this program um, each and every year. This year we did five locations 
and we put out the call to artists uh, early in the year in January. And so we had a lot of more outreach. Um, I know I sent, um, we sent the call to artists um, to Rose. I hope she shared it with you all. But we, just the visibility of the previous projects and an article in the Arizona Daily Sun got us a lot of applications. We got 10 to 17 applications per locations. And I, like I said, we had five locations. And we had four really strong applications from indigenous artists from uh, Cree Watahomaji, Chelsea B. Goody, Dwayne Koyawina, and uh, Leander Begay. And um, one of the uh, proposals, uh, Dwayne's, was chosen for a site. And one of the proposals, uh, Chelsea's, uh, was um, a, a first alternate, meaning it was a, a very, very close second. So if something happens and the first artist can't do it, the uh, hers will be chosen. But all four uh, scored really highly with our selection panels. And I just want to let you know that each location has a separate selection panel. You know, we do site-specific art. And so um, in, in that sense, each of these artists applied for a different location. Um, and so, like I said, they did well in, in, in four of the five locations. Um, one of the things that um, we have noticed, we've noticed this in the past, and uh, we really want to help try to make sure that um, the same artists aren't being chosen just because they already have visibility because they've gotten some of our projects. I think there's a perception that just because um, an artist has got one of our projects as an endorsement by our program, but like I said, each project uh, has a separate selection panel, usually made of vested community, community members from that area. And so that isn't the case, but we also have another program, and I just kind of want to touch on this quickly, the Beautification and Action Grants, where people can apply directly, artists can apply directly, private businesses can apply to put a mural on their wall, um, and sometimes some of the people get our commissions, you know, businesses, they don't know who to reach out to, and they tend to reach out to the same artists. So one of the things that we're trying to do, we saw this a lot with uh, Sky Black earlier and, and Mural Mice, um, who did the wonderful, you know, mural on the side of the Orpheum. It's absolutely fantastic. But then it was kind of like everybody only thought of that artist. And we really do want to... Um, grow the community both for um you know i think it makes a more interesting art mix but i think also we want to um give more artists opportunity so one of the things that we're going to do is i you know now that we have some of these artists applying when businesses come to us on bia grants and they're interested um in having an indigenous artist i would really you know we would really like to just at least suggest these other applicants that are applying. And of course it is always up to the business and it is always up to the selection panels and our, you know, traffic signal cabinets and other, you know, projects, what they think works best for the project. We don't take that away, um, but we are um, kind of wanting to nudge some of the inclusion of these, you know, really wonderful artists we're seeing, you know, Cree just um, received the Viola award for um, emerging artists uh, at, at by Creative Flagstaff, um, you know, on April 1st of this year. And uh, I really, you know, uh, was, we, panels were really touched by uh, Chelsea B. Goody's, um, her, her image, her proposals in the lower right-hand corner here. So we would really like um, to see, you know, the projects extended to other artists. I'm also going to meet individually with the artists who, you know, got these high scores but didn't quite, you know, got the commission this time to just tell them, you know, in person a bit more what the selection panel comments were so that hopefully that their next applications can even be stronger because they were all strong. They all did well. We were very excited. Um, we just really want to increase cultural visibility 
And, and with that, I just kind of wanted to touch really quickly on a project that um, Rose participated in on the selection panel and in a focus group and in some um, uh, consultations with the artists. There's an art fence uh, out at the airport that has just been put up. Um, it has two components. It has a fence and then it has medallions with explanations in, in the sidewalk adjacent to it. The fence just was installed last week. It has 28 panels. Um, it's 280 feet long, and I'm only showing you a few that I happened to get, uh, sections that I happened to get a picture of last week during the install. The medallions are not in yet, and that's what you're seeing on the left, you know, a little explanation. But I just wanted, you know, let you know that we're always thinking of cultural visibility for um, all parts of the population so that everybody can, you know, recognize the themselves in the art in our community uh, but this is uh, one of the panels that's up um, you know here we have um, a, a, a spider woman grandmother greeting the kayaker this is a lot of fun and fancy uh, in this artwork uh, also included was the horn lizard there was a tribute to a uh, Hopi artist Fred Kabuti and then uh, a reference to the alternate names and, and sacred aspects of the peaks as well. There are other things, um, like I said, this isn't inclusive and, and there's lots of other cultural references, but I just kind of wanted to highlight this for you today and um, to know if I could answer any questions or take your suggestions uh, about how to increase, uh, you know, visibility um, in other projects. Hi, uh, My name is Jenna. Commissioner Marks. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Hi, Jenna, I got a question for you. Yes. Um, so with these uh, artwork you're talking about putting on the uh, uh, street uh, signal cabinets, how long would the artwork work be up for? Like, is it for six months, for a year? Well, the the we think that the tech, you know, the vinyl wraps. Um, we were first told like, you know, three to five years, and they're doing so well. Um, the original ones that we had out there, that we're really thinking that they will be up five years easily, um, and maybe longer. Uh, we have yet, as a program, um, Commissioner Lance, to make the decision of when to change them out. Um, I kind of, I think we want to spread as many locations as we can find that are feasible before we go and change what's out. Especially people get attached to them. But I'm thinking about five years, so maybe we'll start rotating some, some of the the first two that we put up for the pilot, uh, maybe in two more years um but yeah they, they're up for you know or you know another choice is that we can just reprint the one that's on if it's just fading and 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 keep the same artist that's a program decision that we haven't come to yet um but we just want to provide as much canvas for as many artists as we can as long as we have funding that is definitely our our goal um one of the Things that we also want to explore, Commissioner Lance, is if we could ever get ADOT to allow us to use the traffic signal cabinets on Route 66, Humphreys, and Milton, because they're some of the most visible in our community, but we don't have their permission. Um, we have the city traffic signal cabinets, and so we cannot do Route 66, uh, you know, uh, and anything that ADOT, if it's, if it's a signal on on one of their streets we don't have control of that traffic signal box and they're some of the most attractive to do quite frankly <laughs> yeah they get a lot of exposure that was my question thank you oh thank you thank you for your interest in that any other questions or comments
Okay, was this a possible action item, uh, Rose, or uh, is that that basically it, the presentation? No, this is just an update that Jenna wanted to do regarding okay. some of the art that okay. is being that uh, that the city has completed or maybe in progress. So these are some things, um, an update from her, and no no decision or direction is needed or vote. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Marks, do you, oh, you put, is your hand up again? Or did you just not take it down? You might be muted. Uh, Rose, your hand is up. Sorry, I didn't mean to put my hand up. I was trying to see who had their hand up. <laughs> I, think it's a, I think Commissioner it's Marks. Has, oh, yeah. Commissioner Marks has put a comment in the um, in in the chat, um, and uh, so I thank you uh, for your comments. So maybe he's not able to speak right now. So okay. this is what Daryl put, um, or Commissioner Marks. This is appreciated. Cultural visibility is important. Our youth are asking for more. And then okay. Commissioner Toya. Yes, I just want to know how I can be of help to um, contribute to what you're asking. Um, for the artists, um, if, for example, does that mean would you like for us to help, you know, maybe encourage other artists to um, either do samples of art or even just to apply? Definitely to apply. I think that what I hear is so much like one of uh, the artists who who received a, a commission for this project, he said, oh, you know, people have been encouraging me to apply, encouraging me to apply. And I just never did. And I, you know, somebody finally said, you know, do it. And and he this person, you know, was awarded, you know, uh, a, a cabinet um, and and he was really surprised, like first time. Um, I think people are afraid to apply. I think getting them over the barrier to apply is is our biggest hurdle. So um, I think we try to make that's why I, I I'm highlighting this project of the traffic signal cabinets because it's as long as you can do a high resolution file and or you know somebody who can help you do that, um, you don't have to do the logistics of handling the vendor you know and 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 being in charge of the printing and the wrapping you know in, in any of those parts and so um i would really when i send the calls to artists to rose and, and she distributes them to you just yeah the encouragement to apply and of course um co-chair toya i know you're on the focus group for um the uh county park and I'm still working on that. And you've already been such a great help in shaping, um, I think, that call. We're just kind of working through some of the logistics still of the business license agreement and everything. So um, it's it's coming. And, and also, we didn't quite have staff to start it. But now I have two staff. So uh, we're, we're, we're getting ready to uh, come back to you guys. So those contributions on those focus groups that I put together, really help with this visibilities. And so Rose served on the focus group for the airport. And you can see you can see the kind of input and in, in, that came out that came out of that. And also obviously um selecting artists that are responsive <laughs> is part mm -hmm. of that process as well. Yeah. <laughs> and usually when usually Jana sends me information and I send it both to ICF and also to the commissioner so that they can reach out to other people and get them to have their you know circles apply whoever is interested. And then I also send it out to other people that I have on my contact list. So, and then there's also, 
usually um, press releases that are done on our website um, that are usually posted there. So there's just several things that that sort of are out there for for the public to see. Um, and usually the art is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Jenna, uh, most of the art has to go through a, an application process. Yes, but like like I said, it it is can be different for the different lev levels of complexity of projects. Um, you know, if it's it's part of putting form liners on a freeway, you have to go through a very formal you know city process on planet this this platform called Planet Bids, and it's a little cumbersome. We try to make the traffic signal cabinets easy. Like it is a five hundred page statement you know, images of your proposal by email. So, um, and so we try to, you know, really gear the different levels. Um, I'm going to try to find this. Um, Commissioner Marks is asking me where it is that you sign up for our listserv. And I'm looking for it on our website so that I can put the link in your chat. All right. Thank we do you, have a yeah. We have a list serve. I know you might want to go on while I search for that, but I will put it in the chat. Um, and uh, so we send out then uh, newsletters with all of our opportunities to every artist on that list serve. We try to do a kind of a monthly newsletter. Jenna, so I'm thinking um, if there is someone, well, in particular, if there's an artist and I'm familiar with, you know, that type of artwork or their um, capabilities, then I'm going to probably just directly reach out to you. That way we kind of do like a um, artist by artist um, and then you can help me and the artist figure out which best is maybe for them to submit their application or drawing to or art? Yeah, I would be happy to do it that way, co-chair Toya. So if you um, send me the contact information, first of all, I'll get them on the list. I will review the art. And then if I see opportunities, I think they're particularly, you know, scope for, I will reach out to them individually. Sure, Absolutely. and then also what I'm noticing is um, also like our advertisements um, to get artists or not not just artists in particular, but anything, um, anything to promote um, what you're requesting that looks, you know, attractive. I think that has a lot to do with it. I feel like sometimes we're notifying the public, we're notifying the community and that form of notification isn't so attractive or it doesn't catch an eye. So, you know, this, this is just a pointer that I'm seeing and noticing. <laughs> yeah, we're working on it. I, I think since our new staff is hired, we have been making flyers. We have, you know, yes, not just been putting out the standard <laughs> city call to artists. Uh, we have really, you know, really been, uh, been, been trying. Yay. Um, Okay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, Co-chair Washington, back to you. Okay. Uh, well, thank you very much for that presentation. And there's, there's the images are so beautiful. I, I really, I really like the, the images that you've shown and thank you very much. All right. Um, and I will stop sharing those images and I I think I did put the link. I'm I'm testing it to see if it worked worked and I, if it didn't I will I will correct it, okay? Okay. All right. What is the next agenda item, Rose? Jenna kicked me off. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here you go. Um can you see that? Uh, B, assessing accessibility and equities and barriers with wildfire communication and environmental justice communities. Um, I think that's the uh, next uh, presentation um, by Dr. Grimm. Hi, how are you? Thank you, everyone. And Daryl and Joe, nice to see you again. I know I chatted with you at the Indigenous Circle of Flagstaff meeting. Um, I am just 
I'm trying to figure out where to share it because oh, there it is. It moved from when we tested it out, Rose. Um, all right. So let me share this presentation. And Let's see, for some reason it's not showing me what's on my screen. It's like a different interface than last time. Let's see if I do this. Are you able to see my PowerPoint being shared at all or? Hmm. No, we don't see it. Okay. For some reason it's, I'm going to end the show and start again. I'm apologize. Um, it worked when we tested it. That's not how it always goes. <laughs> yeah. Um, for some reason, it's not picking it up. Um, I don't know if you have, if you want to share, or I could just also just talk about the project, which is fine, and then share. Um, go ahead and start talking. I'll go ahead and find find it um, on yeah, my slide. It's not, it's on my screen, but when I try to share, it's only letting me share the screen that everybody's on that I'm speaking to. Um, let me, I could try moving it over. See yeah, go ahead and just go ahead and start your presentation. All right. Okay. So, um, I wanted to talk to you about a project that we're doing, and some of you I've reached out to in various forms before, so you might be familiar with it. Um, but this is a NASA-funded project um, looking at um, basically wildfire communication and information and how different communities within Flagstaff experience that. And um, overall, we're really trying to understand people's kind of thoughts about their risk um, what they're doing to mitigate for wildfire, and also um, looking at how different groups experience it differently. And one thing to clarify is when we're talking about wildfire in this study, when we're talking about wildfire communication, we're looking at the communication that's beforehand. So like things that the city and the forest are doing to mitigate, you know, the potential of catastrophic fire through prescribed burns and thinning, um, things that people could do at their own homes, um, and also preparedness, and then information that's during an active wildfire um, that people are getting, and then also after fire. So looking at things like, um, especially post-fire flooding is um, an issue I know is on a lot of people's minds, um, but also things like flood insurance, disaster relief, and seeing if people are aware of this and if, um, you know, they know this information, if they're getting it, and how to improve that communication. And so, you know, one of our real goals with this project is to help, you know, find where there's gaps. And, um, oh, great. I, I'm on the third, the research goals one now. Thank you. Great. Um, and so one of the things that we're trying to do with this is that um, we want to improve wildfire communications and information for these different groups if they are experiencing um, gaps or not getting some of it. And so looking at some of those barriers or challenges that might need to be addressed, such as language, internet accessibility. Um, you know, if people are getting information through trusted and preferred modes, and then also what type of information is being shared and what's not. So are they getting some and not others? And so if, um, you could go to the next slide. And so for this project, we um, there's a few different kind of phases of this research. And I've, I'm a social scientist. I forgot to say that. I got thrown off by the presentation not working. But I'm a social scientist, and I'm leading that part of the project. And so what I've been doing is um, conducting interviews with those who create and share wildfire information from, very, from within the city, um, federal agencies, um, state agencies, and um, also then looking at, oh, if you want to go to the next one, I think it popped back up for us. Um, and, you know, but also, you know, local media and nonprofits as well to understand, you know, what they're doing, challenges they have, things that they think are needed, what 
you know, how they're trying to reach different communities um, and things that would help them with their work to help inform the next phase, which is a survey. And I'm finalizing the survey right now. Um, and then I wanna share it with different folks who can give feedback. Um, so, you know, um, someone from Sunnyside um, Neighborhood Association knows some folks who wanna provide some feedback on it. So looking at kind of um, ensuring it's really getting to the community members' needs and concerns and including other information in there. And then we're going to mail it out to about 3,000 homes, um, focusing on um, kind of areas where people who would be um, considered by the EPA's definition of environmental justice communities um, are using census block data. But then there'll also be an online version that we're just gonna share widely with every, anybody can take it within um, our study area, which is gonna be the city of Flagstaff and then south to Munns Park, west to Belmont, north to Kendrick, and east to Winona, and capturing that area. And what we really wanna understand is communities' experiences, needs, challenges, um, compare different demographics, and also identify if there's some certain preferences with certain demographics, letting people know that, hey, if you wanna reach this group that's not being reached right now, these are some ways you might wanna better reach them and address their concerns. Um, and also, when we talk about demographics, we're thinking about different language groups, different ethnicities and races, but also different home ownerships. So looking at renters versus primary homeowners versus secondary homeowners. Um, and then over the summer too, uh, my colleague um, on this project, Dr. Mitchell, is leading forestry data collection. Um, and so calculating tree measurements and densities in different neighborhoods, the fuel loads, and um, kind of doing a cursory assessment of firewise preparation. So seeing um, you know, how these different neighborhoods are in terms of their fire risk and also matching that up with maybe how survey respondents um, perceive their risk within their neighborhood. Um, and so if you wanna go to the next slide. And so one reason I wanted to present today was um, to get some insight on needs and concerns to inform the survey. Like I said, I have a pretty solid draft, but I'm still finalizing it. So I'd love to have any feedback people have. And then also ask people when we're ready with the online version to share it with your networks, with your neighborhoods. We wanna get as many voices, especially those who maybe are typically not heard and are going to be probably better reached through these social networks um, rather than a researcher reaching out to them. So I'm really trying to build those connections to get people to share this. Um, and then, um, like I said, we've done a lot of interviews, but I'm still doing more. And especially if there's anybody who is just key within certain communities, that's those are the ones that are harder to reach for interviews. It's really easy to contact the PIO on the National Forest, for example, but knowing those trusted sources would be great. Um, and then um, we're going to create outreach materials, um, not that you have to help, but like any insight about ways that people like to have, you know, get information or sharing those would be great. And then let's see. Um, and then one of the other things that's really great is in this um, proposal, there's funding to support community partners. Um, obviously, um, a commission being uh, a government agency can't probably provide, get that support. But, you know, there are different ways. Um, I've talked to some of the neighborhood associations who have talked about, you know, having money come and then they have somebody who helps get surveys and kind of boots on the ground approach. Um, so there's lots of different ways, um, but recognizing the time and effort. Also, um, one of the things that would be also helpful is if people wanted to look at the survey and give us feedback, um, just having that insight, because again, um, you know, a lot of what's in there, and I have to actually thank, for example, um, Daryl and Joe at the Indigenous um, Circle of Flagstaff meeting, They pro you provided some great feedback that I was able to put into that survey. Um, so if you go to the next slide, actually you could skip ahead just in some, it's just like a, hey, we wanna know this. But um, so some of the things, um, if you go to the next slide, th these are the broad topics that we have in the survey. Um, so looking at what information has been received or not received, trusted and preferred types and sources of info, um, preferred methods for getting that, challenges to accessing or understanding information, 
um, opinions about the language, um, if it's culturally appropriate, offensive, et cetera, um, opinions of personal and neighborhoods, fire and flood safety, level of concern, um, kind of understanding also people's recent impacts that they've had um, to see if that relates also to people's views of concern and um, fear. And then also mitigation actions they've taken and if there's challenges they've encountered to those, such as if you're renting or the cost involved or things like that. But why I wanted to present one to kind of say, here's this project that we're doing and um, you know build that connection so that when we wanna share it also, but I would also love any feedback of additional things people um, might wanna include or concerns um, or challenges you've heard from your community about wildfire information and communication that we can maybe try to incorporate. Or also if anybody's interested in seeing a draft of this survey and giving feedback, that'd be appreciated. Um, so just wanted to share a little bit about this project. So thank you. And I'm gonna put already, um, there's the question slides, but I'll also put it in the chat, my email, if you want to reach out as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, we will go then to the next agenda item. Um, hold on, hold on a second. Where did I, where did I put it? And I, I have an appointment I have, to, a doctor's appointment I have to run to, but um, if um, I will send, um, I think Rose has this, but also if anybody has any, you know, thoughts or um, other, you know, things that you want to share that to, or if you'd like to see the survey, you know, please let me know, send me an email, um, because I really want this to be as, you know, really working with different community members to ensure that this is meeting your needs. Um, as opposed to just being a research study, but that's actually going to better serve all the different communities in Flagstaff. So I really would love any feedback about things that you've experienced with wildfire communication and information needs you have and um, you know, thoughts you have. So thank you. Yes, thank you very much. We appreciate that. Thank you, Jenna. Okay. Um, the Greater Observatory Mesa Area Trail Plan draft for comments. Hey, I have a, so this one has to do with, um, with a group of people who are working. Um, they're also hired consultants with, through Southwest Decision Resources. And they are supporting Flagstaff or the city of Flagstaff on this trail planning on Obser Observatory Mesa. So right now they're in the comment phase for stakeholders and they would like to um, come and see if we could, as a indigenous commission, provide some comments on, on, on the things that they're doing. So what we, what we would thought was that it would be best to maybe have um, a few members because they can't wait until the next uh, uh, next meeting. So they would like to have our comments back by within two weeks. And so what we could do is have a maybe some members who are interested in this um, to form maybe th three members or so that can provide comment regarding regarding this. And then our then those comments will be, Include it in um, later in May at a, at a more public forum. So that's what they're trying to do is just make sure that they're taking care of um, some stakeholders early on, and then they're going to open that up to the public. So if you're interested, um, I'd like to know if there's people interested in meeting, like maybe within the next two weeks to talk about the questions they have and the maps that they also provided. Um, this will probably take maybe 
um, less than an hour to 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 talk about it and then submit comments to them. So if people would volunteer, that would be awesome. Okay, do you have any, uh, do we have any volunteers or any questions about this? Is this going to be <clears throat> presented at a, like a certain meeting or a certain time or anything like that, or is, or it's just like doing an overview and submitting comments? Not at a regular meeting, no. But what I was asking was maybe if we have some commissioners that are willing to meet in the next in the next two weeks to talk about this subject, look at the maps, look at their questions and provide comment and then send that back to them. But it won't, they won't be able to wait until our next meeting. Absolutely, yeah, count me in then. <laughs> okay. Very Thank good. Thank you, you, Commissioner. You can count me in too. Who was that? Yeah. Uh, this is Darren Lance. Okay, very good, excellent. And then I'll reach out to Commissioner Cuddy I too, because I know she's a runner. She likes to do those kinds of things. So I'll ask her if she can be part of that group. Thank you so much. And then I'll be in touch to set up a meeting with between the four of us to talk about that. Okay. Awesome. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Native American Heritage Month, Flagstaff. Okay, um, so I wanted to share with you some of the um, things that we want to update. So this is the current flag that we're using for Native American Heritage Month. And you can't even see the wording from the street. <laughs> and yeah. I know it's kind of sad, huh? So. And it's been really um, sort of beat up by the wind and stuff. So we, we really want to update that. And and thank you to council member um, House. She was able to get us some time to update our flag before the um, before the next before next November. And we'd like to get it done sometimes this summer so that it's all taken care of. So we have a, a couple of um, samples to show you. And just taking that into consideration, there's there's internal costs that need to happen. There's only, I think, maybe maximum of $200 that we can utilize for an actual certain size flag um, that is acceptable to be hanging outside. And then, um, and then just to make sure that it is, um, a certain, like I said, a certain measurement, I think it's three by five. Um, that I'd have to make sure, but it, that that is something that's not really important right now, but the cost is really there. Um, I did check into some, some that are really pricey. They're like $400 and I didn't think that we could do something like that. So we just wanted to make sure. And that's why I'm utilizing our in-house um, internal um, folks that know how to do that know how to design these things will be helpful. So I have two of them that um, Samantha had worked up for us based on some of the designs that she's received um, online as well as some of the work that she's done before. And I wanted to show those to you. Uh, yeah. So this is one. And then the other one is this one. So I don't know if there's certain things you'd like to have on the flag or if this is OK. Um, so I wanted your input on that. Or you can just direct our staff to work on it, you know, so. I like uh, Daryl's comments in the chat. Yeah, I agree with him. He says that they're, they're both good.
Um, so the, sorry, Rose, um, the comment I was referring to was um, uh, the tribes for our area. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, it'd be so, really cool to get like colors or even the um, the the logos, the emblems of all the tribes, either up here in northern Arizona or just in Arizona. Might be a little might be a little much, but I liked where Daryl was going with it. All right, so what I'm going to do is ask you to give me a sample of what you're thinking of so that we can make it a little bit to how your your thoughts are going. Commissioner Marks. Um, are you maybe we should decide on are we just talking Coconino County um, Indigenous tribes, Indigenous nations, or are we talking about Northern Arizona, maybe the, the 13 or 14 who deem the peaks um, sacred? Are we are we doing that? So I guess I need a little bit more direction on that so that we can give um, a better sample. I know um, if you wanted like a sample, recently there was a young lady that won the flag contest for I believe U of A. I think that would be um, somewhat similar to um, what we're trying to or would like to see okay yeah Do and it know, looks like well i'm sorry i'm sorry um commissioner toya <laughs> can you send me that information so i can sure i'll um cut and uh, clip that for you and email that to you when i get a chance oh and then he's asking if um we can get a sample i'll email it to maybe um both of you and you can take a look at it um, it she recently won and it's really really nice. Um, I like I love the idea and when I saw her win, I I thought uh, would be nice for Flagstaff or somewhere in northern Arizona to kind of adopt a similar flag. Is this is this something that uh, we could get emailed to us in like a file, like a PDF or something like that? Because I got a I got a friend who helped help me out with our logos for our businesses like he has access to being able to implement stuff you know he can play around with things as, as, especially how uh C commissioner marks was talking about adding the tribes maybe we could do some kind of circular emblems around this around these uh um uh pictures you like already have here maybe but, here but, but or here you need something uh -huh. like a pdf or in right order here. for him to yeah in order for him to be able to make adjustments, we would need that file. Okay, right. I can do that. Awesome. Okay, sounds good. And um, I like that um, idea of um, Commissioner Lance that you have someone available. I appreciate that comment because um, in all reality, uh, we're all working together to bring something really nice to the community. And you're involving a partner who I'm quite sure maybe is also indigenous, right? Yes, yes. Great, yes. Mm -hmm. awesome. awesome. Okay. Yay. Yay. Uh, and, and yes, thank you so much for that. And I know that once we get at least what it looks like, we can we can get it printed. And um, and that's going to be it's good. that's going to be where the cost will be. So I'll I'll get these um, emailed to you so that you can um, maybe play around with it. Okay. As to specific tribes, uh, I the, this is just kind of off the top of my head, and, and it's kind of like uh, thinking out loud. I don't know that I have a um, a um, concentrated opinion about it. But um, since it's a Flagstaff celebrate, I mean, Flagstaff, it, it's about Flagstaff celebrating Native American Heritage Month. Um, I, I, it seems like it should um, uh, emphasize the tribes in this area around Flagstaff and with regard to um, the uh, tribes that hold uh, the peak sacred. I think that that's, that, that's good too. Um, I don't know if there are any tribes that don't hold it sacred in some way. I mean, uh, th there have been various tribes that have been 
very um, uh, in the forefront of protecting the peaks and so on like that. But but uh, uh, but but anyway, those are just some thoughts that I wanted to throw out just off the top of my head. They don't mm -hmm. they're, they're not specific, but but I just wanted to say that. And I think that's what um, Commissioner Marks had put. It would be great to honor the 14 that yeah. are home within this mountain. Yeah. 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 So we can at least look, have it designed and then see what it looks like and see if it if the print if it's printable and because another another step is that it needs to be which I know uh, our new commissioner uh, Lance knows is that it, it could it may need to be what they call vectorized so that the pixels are better to see those kinds of things definitely it might it might be a little bit too busy too you know after mm -hmm. all the different emblems get put in there it might be a little bit too much but like how um uh commissioner washington was saying that it might be good just to have the the uh two tribes that are probably the closest, maybe Navajo or Hopi, but again, it'd have to be put together first to see how it looks. Uh-huh, right. Okay, nice. Okay, we'll go to the next agenda item. All right, let me move this back over here. So, So I have a, a couple of updates and I was hoping that Commissioner Yellowhair would be here. And this is regarding renaming Agassiz Peak and City Council. And would it be okay, Mayor, if you could sort of update our commission about, um, I know some of them were probably there, but just to update in your voice, um, what council decided. Yes, sorry, on the renaming. Uh -huh. Regarding okay. Agassiz Peak. Yeah, so the it was unanimous support for um, signing on to the statewide effort and and then unanimous support to pursue it um, federally. So as I understand it, the state effort would change the name on um, state maps and state documents, uh, but then uh, we would also pursue some sort of um, federal recognition of the name change. But the uh, the council was really excited and enthusiastic about it. That's fantastic. That's 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 good to hear. Uh, th thank you, Mayor, for that report. It was unanimous. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we were tickled. Hey, while I'm unmuted, um, could I just extend a thanks for something? Definitely. Please do. Thank you so much. Thank you for um, all the input to the students and the teachers for the mural that's been painted in my office. I hope that you'll stop in and see it. It's really, really beautiful. And um, and your input was a critical part of it. So just thank you. Thank you, Mayor. And thank you for just even reaching out and asking for that. I think there was a lot of teaching moments for our students, but also for our teachers, which was the which is just so valuable. And um, and I don't think there's no amount of experience that can replace that. Just you know, because they're now very um, they know things that they've not known before, which is really awesome. Absolutely. And uh, we've talked about this many times, but I felt that the the entire process was a um, lesson in community. And um, and I was just I'm just I'm so thrilled to have it 
to have it there and to have worked with the students and the teachers. And we're going to be holding some kind of informal reception for for everyone who helped in some way. And so I'll make sure to get the word out to you when that is um, scheduled. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so the next one is regarding the retreat planning for our Indigenous Commission. And that is gonna be June, in June 2023. Um, Right now, the only date that's available for, I had picked two. One of them, I, I still um, am trying to find the availability. The only thing is that if we pick a weekend, um, the building is locked and there's there's really no, no way to have public access um, if people from the public want to attend our meeting or the retreat. Um, so, and that's something that we need to have although they can still tune in virtually as well. And then the other one is, um, that's our staff uh, conference room up here where we've had our retreat before in, in City Hall second floor. So I'm, I'm getting the availability of that one. The other one is June, it's June 12th, which is a Monday. That's available for Aquaplex. And that one has public access. So if people want to come and, and sit with us, that's available as well. So um, right now the votes are between Monday and Sunday. So if those of you who are here and willing to vote on those two dates, can we do that? so that I know what's going on with, and then I'll find out what's going on with the rest of the commissioners. So if we can do a count, a vote count on preference, uh, let's see, Commissioner Zavala. Monday, June 12th, um, looks great. Okay. And then Commissioner, Co-Chair Toya. Any day, but a weekday. Okay, weekend. And then co-chair Washington. Uh, I prefer weekends, uh, so Sunday would be my first preference. And I would need to grab my calendar to see if I'm available on that Monday, uh, June 12th. I, I don't know, uh, but, but I'll just stay to preference for for the weekend. For the weekend, okay. Yeah. And then Commissioner Lance. Yeah. What What time were you looking at on Monday? It'll be nine to two. Nine to two. And then it would be the same thing on Sunday, right? Right. Okay. Um. Yes, Sunday. Okay. All right. I'll check with the rest and get uh, get permission or or get their preference. Sorry. Uh, so that's the end of that. And then I'll and I'll I'll reach back out and let you know what the availability is for our staff room up here. Sunday, I'm sure it's going to be available. Um, like I said, the only thing is that it won't be, it won't have public access, but the access will still be there virtually. Okay, sound good. Any questions? You look like you have a whole bunch of questions, Fawn. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually don't have a question, but I do have a comment. Okay. I just want to thank um, our new commissioners for um, getting or jumping right in and volunteering to be a part of um, 
some good work for the community, which involves your time and your true hearted opinions and beliefs. So thank you very much. I appreciate um, Commissioner Zavala and Commissioner Lance. Thank you. Commissioner Marks, I forgot all about you. I'm good with the 12th. <laughs> <laughs> And are you good with Sunday too? But if Sunday is a majority, I will work with Sunday. Oh, nice. Yay. Okay. Well, he's my brother, so he's okay with me forgetting about him. <laughs> uh, all right. And we just have, we're just now a little over five, uh, five minutes by 105. Okay. Uh, is there any informational items? Just quickly, I'll, I'll ask for that. If not, or. Oh, yeah, I just wanted okay. to make a quick announcement. We have a flyer out for our indigenous health fair, which will be I'm going to go ahead and share it really quick. Can you guys see it? Maybe yes. yes. Or, OK, great. This is it. It'll be Saturday, May 20th from 10 to 3. I got Namarcos to donate 15 pizzas and we paid for the other. Oh no, um, 30 pizzas, and then we paid for another 30. So 15 pizzas will be delivered um, every hour from 11 to two that day. We'll have Flag Family Food Center there. We've got some um, indigenous royalty from NAU coming. I'll be there and I'm hoping some more of you guys from the commission could attend. We, that would be really exciting for people to meet. And we've been like running out of flyers left and right from different events we've been tabling. So we're excited and we're welcoming cultural dress because I'll be dressed up. And so we want everybody to feel comfortable and we're really excited about it. And it's 100% free. And I, <clears throat> still have a few spots if anybody wants to table there for it. I've got about four or five because I've got 30 vendors, I think, RSVP'd for it already. When is that again? Involved? Yes. Uh, go, go ahead, uh, uh, Toya, you had a question. Um, may I ask, may I please, or would it be okay to bring my daughter? She's a royalty from Hopi High School. Yes, please. We would love that. And I've got, I ordered a bunch of extra shirts too, because we're going to have shirts that specifically say like Indigenous Health Fair. And I'm saving some for people who are able to attend, like your daughter from Royalty. Because hey. uh, okay. that would be wonderful. Awesome. I'll be there. So exciting. Yeah. So that, and, that's and, all on my end. And yes, you're going to send out the flyer to all of us, right? Yes, ma'am. Or, or and, you can send it to me and I'll send it out. And Perfect. when is that again? When is that event? May 20th from 10 okay. a.m. to 3 p.m. 10 to 3. OK, yes. thank you. Absolutely. Thank you for asking. OK. Um, are you going to? Uh, I wanted to show you something. I forgot to show you something really fast. Can I still show it to you? Yeah, certainly. OK. Um, I have this list that people had given me for um, the topics for the the retreat. So this one's going to be for sure, um, which is just uh, deputy city clerk will be doing this part. And then I'll do an update on the work plan and the recommendations. But these others are what other people wanted to see um, as part of our um, retreat. So I just wanted to show that to you, law enforcement, judicial, youth leadership, mentoring, environmental stewardship with sustainability and strong water policy, um, ICCC next steps, and I received a, a comment says we can't wait years down the road. Um, so we need, so that's one of those subjects they wanna talk about, peaks issue, projected mission goals, commission goals, and then public events. So I'm gonna send this out to you and then I'm gonna see, can you go ahead and just on the side, does this need a presenter or does is it just a discussion to start the planning process? So, um, and then is it a priority? Yes or no, that kind of stuff. So just answer those questions for me, okay? Okay, sounds good. Okay, is there, I, I guess that's the end of our agenda then. And so I will now uh, adjourn the meeting at 1.10 p.m. Thank, Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming.
Thank you all. Be safe. Oh. Be well. Daryl, did you have something real quick? Oh. He said he loves the agenda for okay. the retreat. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. The meeting Thanks, is great. Bye, everyone. See you on the 20th. Bye. Bye.